The Upshot Project welcomes you to the Cheeky Travelers podcast, a show for people who love and aspire to travel. In each episode, you'll get a greater insight into what traveling can do for you as it has for us. From our anecdotes, we aim to inspire you to go out and explore the world around you with an open mind. If you would like to see if our voices match our faces, you're more than welcome to pop over to our YouTube channel, The Upshot Project. But we also have other social media in Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok if you would like to reach out to us. And now, it's time to get lost. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Cheeky Travelers Podcast sponsored by the upshot project <laughs> okay sponsored yeah yeah yeah. the upshot project is sponsoring us totally free we're not getting any money from them because uh, they are us but i'm your co-host Saul, and i'm your other co-host the handsome devil hayden yeah so in today's episode is actually the follow-up of episode five which was living abroad uh, which was moving abroad. We are now doing living abroad yeah, today. Exactly. And uh, before we get into that, though, I did want to start off with the classic cheeky travelers cheeky question. Cheeky travelers cheeky, cheeky question. question. I'm a bit scared. A bit scared? Yeah. Because <laughs> you said the last time that I did a cheeky question, it wasn't cheeky enough. So uh, I went a little bit. I'm curious. Okay. If you could hook up with any celebrity in the world, who would you pick? Oh, <laughs> like, you. You're a celebrity now. Uh, yeah, but I'm uh, obviously talking about other, other, you know, other famous people. Uh, define hookup. Uh, like sleep with? Or just a kiss? Just a kiss. Or just a date? Just a kiss? Do I want just a kiss? Yeah, well, we're always just a kiss, so that way, you know, children can listen to this. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. That's a really, really good question. Who am I really attracted to? Uh, I've got a couple. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, of course. <laughs> but Kennedy. huh? <clears throat> Dermot Kennedy. Dur <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that's the only one. Ziggy Albert. <clears throat> no, not even like I. I love this wine man. I don't. I don't like his face or his. Um, why? Exactly. So I would go with Dermot Kennedy. I know it's not really original because it's, it's been my answer for like a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. But Dermot Kennedy or Brendan Fraser when he was in uh, the jungle, George of the Jungle. George of the Jungle. Oh yeah. Oh, for me, it's when he was in the Mummy. Oh, that like, too. yeah, but I do like my long hair guys, you know. So I know, and it's really the opposite because Dermot Kennedy is shaved. So very much. I don't make sense, but yeah, Brendan Fraser and George of the Jungle, pretty yeah. much my type. Pretty much when I realize I think I am actually heterosexual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that answer to be fair. I like that. It's very very nice. Yeah, that's when I discovered. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Might be bi as well, but at that time I was like, yep, yeah, definitely like man. Fair shake of the old silver spot or not? Very <laughs> about very you? Oh, where are we going back at me now? Uh, are we? All right. I, I do, guess. Do we usually do that with cheeky questions? I mean, usually it's from like, but I'm trying to. Do think. I really want to know? I don't know, because the last time I said, I don't know, what's her name? Uh, Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. I hated on her <laughs> for years. <laughs> for, like, at the second time. Sketchy. So sad. Oh, she's a black widow. Da, da, da. Like, okay, I was like, say it. Say who's your um, celebrity uh, hookup, and uh, we'll discuss it the, after the podcast. <laughs> okay, well, that's not going to happen then because I don't want to be just. Right, it needs to be equal. It needs to be equal. Um, trying to trying to think if I want to go like an athlete, a celebrity, because I do. Mm. Um, or if it'd be like, you know, like a singer or, oh, Crocky, what's her name? Thinking, it's true, it's true, it's true, it's true. Margot Robbie. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I was just like, yeah, celebrity wise, probably Margot Robbie, but. She's um, pretty. She's very pretty. That's okay. I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay. Um, but also back in the days, it was like 100% like 
Avril Lavigne. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, we, that. which you 100% know about. Yes, yeah. Um, and uh, Kim Possible if she was yes. live action. Yes, if <laughs> she was live action. <laughs> Well, oh. let's move on. So, <laughs> alrighty. So we basically ended our last episode asking the question: What is the biggest lie we are told about moving mm. abroad? Yeah. Curious to know because we've not uh, discussed this at all out, off 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 camera even. Yeah. What was yours? <sighs> Me. It was, and it was the biggest lie I've told myself. Mm -hmm. You know. The biggest lie that I've told myself was that I was going to live my abroad life to the fullest every day. Whoa. Yeah, dang. Right? I didn't know that. Right? I, in my head, I was like, new me, like new country, new me. Every day is going to be like I was living my last day. You know, I'm going to be like a totally new person, new patterns, new coping mechanism, like all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And then at first you're like, yeah, yeah, feeling it. And then when you're getting into a routine, you're just going back into the same old patterns. Oh, well, yeah, you, because it's the path of least resistance. What? The path of least resistance. What do you mean? So, like, like here we don't always do things that are always beyond our capabilities. Yeah, like, yeah. in our comfort zone. Yeah. So, in our comfort zone is the path of least resistance. Oh, you're teaching me stuff. Wait. <laughs> oh. Whereas doing something new, like going to a new country, like you're you're not doing the thing that's the least resistance. But when you, you what I'm hearing is like once you move to a new place and you s settle, yeah, you now go back into your old ways yes. of going. Yeah. Like, okay, so it was, eat, like you don't consciously think it, but you just yeah. find yourself doing the things that were easy back in. Yeah, because you've already gone through the challenges. Yes. The biggest difficulties of moving abroad. And now you're like, yeah, you just go back into your old ways. Yeah. And yeah, so that's the biggest lie I think I've told myself. But I think that's also like the biggest lie about living abroad. It's, yeah. Depending on your reason why as well. Be cool. Depending, again, it depends on the reason why you want to move abroad. Because like we said in the, the last episode, there's approximately seven reasons yeah. why we decide to move abroad. Yeah. Sometimes it's our own choices. Sometimes it's not. Yeah. But yeah. What about you? I mean, for me, it was, uh, it's likely that, was it, it'll be easy. Like it'll be easier or like finding a job will be easy. Finding an apartment will be yeah. easy. You've like, been told that? Like it was something that I was like, I'll be fine. Like I speak the same language. Like it'll be like, this is moving to say you like. speak the same language? Yeah. Like yeah. going to the UK yeah, and yeah. then coming here, like we were discussing things and you're like, yeah, it's going to be so easy getting you a, like a job in like a, you know, an agency or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, like, you know, fair enough. And then we get here, it's like, no, that's not, it, it's not. Yeah. I mean, he was different for different reasons, but like in the UK, like. It was very, very tricky for a multitude of reasons, mm. which we are going to tumble into in regards to yeah. the different things yeah. when it comes to moving. Abroad. Yeah. So interesting, and I would be curious to know what is the biggest lie our listeners told themselves without uh, when moving abroad, or what they think we oui. or, or mm -hmm. like like whether or not they're actually right in their assumptions yeah. if they've not yet moved exactly. exactly i think that'd be interesting to yeah to gauge where that comes from yeah, that'd true. be fun that'd be fun um but basically i just wanted to sort of dive into just the bare basics of living abroad so when yeah. you first when you, like because you came to australia thankfully you had me <laughs> um so you had a place to stay but how do you think you would how you think it would have been different if because you said you wanted to move to australia before you met me or not even australia but move abroad yeah, yeah, yeah how do you think you would have felt in regards to trying to set up set yourself up like like the first week of being in a new country mm. well of course i would have researched about I would have booked my first two weeks of uh, okay. accommodation, either in a hostel or whatever, 
to then give myself some time to find an apartment and then find work or even oh man do you find an apartment and then you find work or you find work and then an apartment i think you have that's the thing like that, that's something that i really am yeah, very curious to because know your apartment is gonna the dip, is gonna depend on where you're you're gonna find a job yeah, you know find a job but also how much your income is for said job exactly so if you go too high then uh yeah good. but surely you do some research prior yes yeah because when we when we moved to australia it was covid um and i couldn't work because of, uh, of my visa so we I mean, we could have find we could have found an apartment straight away, but because of the context, and we stayed at your parents' place for about two it? months. Yeah, about seven weeks. Yeah, eight weeks. Well, yeah, two months. Yeah, two months, and then we just decided we we actually picked the location, and then we worked work. away from there. Yeah, because we really wanted to live near the beach. Yeah. Exactly. It's a very privileged thing to say and to be able to actually accomplish. Mm -hmm, but yeah, definitely. It was a goal that we definitely set ourselves. And we found we found a cheap apartment. Well, for the location. Yes. In Sydney, it was a cheap location. If I compare it compared it to my friends that were living in the city, we. we oh yeah, true, true, true. Like the aforementioned Flora and Laura was Laura. Also? Yeah, but also colleagues at work yeah. that were living in like Surrey Hills and stuff. So, super expensive super super expensive um but the, yeah to answer your question it's tricky right it's really i would have gone with i book my two two weeks accommodation and then i see what's easiest yeah you just go with the flow even if like you might shit yourself you <laughs> just go with the flow yeah and then and again surely you do some research prior to mm. check which area you could work which area is it easier to find an accommodation yeah yeah and then bank opening a bank account and is one of the most infuriatingly hair pulling like stressful things because you think it'd be this most straightforward but like going on from that trying to get an apartment get a job get a bank account Sometimes even getting a phone, you need one of the other things to get the rest. Yes. But you can't get any of them without one of the other things. And it's like exactly awful twisting and turning, trying to find a position. That's so true. That is so true because to open a bank account, you need an address. Yes. But then, but then to have an address, they want your bank account. So yeah, you're to like... To prove that you can pay for the place that you're exactly. renting. Exactly. Exactly. And to do that, you probably have, like, you need a but job. But you need a job, but to need a job... Most of the time, particularly when you move to a new yeah. place. Oh, but you need to figure out your social security number as well. Yeah. To, yeah, but then phone number. Uh, I think you would start with the phone number. It would be, it could... That's... Because you could link it to the hostel that you're possibly staying in. Like, you say, what's your address? And you just put this hostel's address. Yeah, perhaps. yeah. And that way you... But do they need it? Oh yeah, they do. Yeah, some it. like I've I've learned that they need one. Yeah. Here. In actually, even in Australia. Yeah, in Australia yeah. as well. I think that's that's actually the really first thing I did when I moved to Australia. I uh, bought myself a SIM card. Yeah. And so I had a phone number to then go to the bank. Yeah, a phone number, and now an address linked to said phone number, which then gave you a possible like the chance to get a bank account. Which then, yeah, but I when agree. when I was th this is aside from the fact that other people who are able to like say move for work, oh. the work organizes all of the <laughs> shebangs, and if that's the case, brilliant, brilliant, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, you don't have to worry usually as much. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when I was in uh, the UK, I uh, my ex mm -hmm. just before you so. Yeah. Um, I moved in well, with her. in between me, actually. <laughs> 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 Just I mean, we talked one. about it in the episode one anyway. But, yeah. Anyway. Oh, yeah, true, true, true. Well, let's move on. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that stress again. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so I found that it was really, really tricky to get a job because they were obviously asking for all these things. Mm -hmm. And then it was very stressful. And I felt like I was pushed into a situation that put me and... 
my ex into a position that things collaborated in a way they probably shouldn't have yeah. in the first place. So, yeah, I, I can only imagine what it's like for people who have almost zero contacts in a place that they're moving to Hmm. and trying to find a base somewhere. I, 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 like off the top of my head, I think a hostel is not a bad, bad call because yeah. they're usually the most inexpensive, maybe an Airbnb. Yeah. Um, and also the staff might help you to get everything you need Yeah. because you're most likely not the first one who've been through it in, in, uh, this hostel. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, also here, one of the beautiful things about being in on the North coast is that there are services to help people immigrate to the area. Definitely. So Definitely, yeah. that helped a lot. That's so true. And that's something I never thought about until you came to Setil, actually, Yeah. because they, they help you. I mean, they are, that, that, that's their mission. Yeah, that's That's literally they, their job is to help you find a job, to exactly. find a place, to find Yeah. everything. So we highly, actually, we just, the massive and the biggest tip we could ever give you when you move abroad alone is to actually find those resources, those organizations that will help you Immigrate to the area. to, Im to immigrate, to find a job. Usually they have an employment section anyway. And yeah, like, and it's amazing. And most of the time they also have partnership with some businesses. Yep. So like that would be the biggest tip if you want to move abroad. Yeah. Necessarily. Yeah. But then, okay, once you've done all of that, you found a job, no, 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 no. Like, what's happening? Well, then, then it goes to that idea of, so if you've got a job, bank and everything, you go into this thing of like the path of least resistance now. Because Okay. you go into like routines, you find like your new routine, new me sort of thing. But then you're like, well, actually, this is quite hard. I, I, I still want to eat my breakfast and, you know, like do all the normal things that you were doing before. Mm -hmm. Mm, find But the same food. find the same food. Oh, yeah. That's so true. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> like you always go, yeah, you always, you always like try. Oh, I feel like, you know, this kind of pasta or like I remember cooking this dish or whatever. And then you're like. Why don't they have it? I can't find those ingredients. Where is it? Like, like, you know, in some places they don't have like the veggie options, for example, Yeah. I'm trying to find like, you know, the stuff that doesn't cost $400 for like a bit of a block of tofu. <laughs> Mm. But just the breakfast. Let, let's just let's just keep it to the breakfast. Oh my Okay. god. I didn't know this was going to be such a point, but yeah, it hit me. That's how you start your day. And if you can't even start your day with the thing you know, you're like, oh, okay. That that's when the change hits. Yes. You know, because American sliced bread is nothing. You, you cannot compare it to European sliced bread or Oh, Australian okay. sliced bread. It's not the same. Just the bread isn't the same. Just the bread. <laughs> so the change starts with your stomach. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was not expecting this. Or This just is the, brilliant. yeah, or just the spread or depending on, or the cereals. Oh, yeah. Have you noticed how cereals are not the same at all? Countries to countries? Yes, no, of course I have. I mean, I don't eat as much cereal as I used to, Mm -hmm. thankfully, because there's a lot less sugar in my diet now. Yeah. But yeah, like here, there's so many different, almost similar things, but entirely different branding. Exactly. Exactly. Trying to find what I know <laughs> in other stuff. yeah Super trippy. but then i guess i'm asking myself if you're moving countries but then you're trying to eat the same thing you were eating at home is it a bit shooting yourself in the foot for like going back to your old ways or Well, first you want to figure out how not to die. So if you're base, like in, in the sense of like, I know what that this stuff works because I'm still alive. You mean more like a, you need to fill your basic needs. Yeah, Like more you, like a basic yeah, needs thing. yeah. I, I think when it comes to sort of exploring more, Hmm. that's where networks at work, maybe work friends or Well, work colleagues first, obviously, Yeah, yeah. and then working hopefully to a friend. Um, but I think the thing that's really helped, at least here, 
because I feel like it was harder here than it mm. was in Wales. In Wales, because yeah. I spoke the same language, yeah. I could talk to anyone and it was fine yeah. in comparison to mm -hmm. here where there's a lot of Francophones and not anywhere, nowhere near as many Anglophones here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So finding something that I wanted to do, like a passion, which was, in my case, sport. Yeah. Finding a passion and then finding a small group of people who were doing that passion mm. is the easiest way of sort of finding, like actually immigrating to the place. Yeah. Because you become part of the community. You're not just an sort of an outsider. outsider. Yeah. Yeah. Because it can feel very lonely. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. you like, particularly if you're not doing the thing, anything that you liked doing before or yeah. exploring a new passion that you've always wanted to do. True. Yeah. So for here, you could go skiing, for example, which you yeah. could do in Sydney. Yeah. But I just want to go back to something you said about creating a community for yourself. And mm -hmm. it just rings a bell because making friends, making new friends as an adult is so difficult. Yeah. It's so difficult. I feel like if you're an extrovert, it might be a bit uh, easier. It's easier to get through the first base. I would yeah. Say. But myself, because I'm kind of an introvert it was so hard so so hard and the only friends i made in australia were not even australians well, and I, I don't i don't count your friends because obviously it's easier mm. but i mean my friends yeah, <laughs> the yeah. one i made by myself like an independent, independent, independent person, person. <laughs> <laughs> you know they they were not australian they were also immigrants yeah which is really interesting and i think I don't know if it was the Australian culture and because it is it is more difficult in cities in big cities to make friends I reckon and I think because you got I expect hmm? is it like because you got no, no, too no. Many options no it's right? because of the the mindset oh okay just because of the mindset I I do believe from my experience and from other people's experiences on moving into bigger cities the first friends they made were also immigrants mm. Because I think there is that sense of you can connect with them because you have more or less the same, the same uh, process, the same, uh, what's the word? Sort of like the same emotion. The same like, background, in, kind of. In the sense that you both are looking for the same thing, like like yeah. a connection with someone else, yeah. but it's really hard to get. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. No, that's definitely. I definitely saw that was something that you uh, struggled with mm, for mm. quite a bit of time. Yeah. Particularly like when when we sort of, you know, went out and we tried to sort of make friends with other Aussie. Yeah. Other Aussies. It was, you found it. Aussie women. But particularly Aussie, Aussie women. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was difficult. It was, as for yourself, I feel that was a bit easier perhaps when we moved here. Well, I mean... For a start, I had already met some of the people that are living here mm -hmm. three years ago. Mm -hmm. So it was a slightly, like, just the fact that I've met them was yeah. a slightly easier transition. Yeah. Whereas, I guess, the good thing is with those people that I'd met, uh, I was able to meet other people through mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like, the volleyball yeah. and Jess. So, like, it made it. So much easier to meet. Mind you, I can't really talk to almost any of them because they all speak French. But like playing volleyball and being amongst them, like it feels really cool. Like I, I get the gist as to whether or not someone exactly, you know, sort of but then and, stuff, but... and then the body communicates as well in a sense, you know, body language and stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I was about to say something I totally forgot. Oh. Oh, uh, no. Was it regarding... And it was community? really interesting. Was it regarding, like, community, making friends, or... I can't remember. Anyway, okay. let's move on. <laughs> but I definitely, like, I definitely vibe with the idea of making sure that when you... That the thing that made it easy for me was finding something that I already, like, a vibe that I liked and was wanting to get. Yeah. And using this immigration service, I was able to find out different sports and things. Mm. I mean... Ben, he, like, loves his surfing, which, by the way, if you're surfing on the 50th parallel, it's really cold. <laughs> it's, like, one degree in the water right now, if that. But what an experience. It's mental. It's and so cool. you surf with seals, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, that was terrifying. I didn't <laughs> see that seal coming. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But, yeah, like, what else? 
What else do you reckon is important to know when moving abroad? Um, I guess one of the things that I've had to sort of work on is being able to, I guess, almost structure my home social life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like making sure that, because I still want those connections, those connections with everyone back at home. I don't want to make it any less. Yeah. And it's by organizing, you know, times to call family, True. friends, and then there's only very specific times I can do that. Mm -hmm. So the second there's a time to, you know, go out with people here or do other things with you, yeah. it's like, I have to sort of try and balance it. Organize, it, just organize your time, having like a schedule. Yeah. It's uh, like something that's been on and off very difficult. Mm. Mm. because it's like a, I guess it's like you're living a parallel life to your friends back home yeah in a sense because I can't share as much with mm. them like like mm. was it like two weeks ago one mm -hmm. or two weeks ago I like I I was home by myself and I just felt like I missed my friends yeah so much yeah mm. and I like and it's just because I just wanted to share some wins and like get some support and some losses or something and hear how they're going same same yeah and that's something important the being homesick yeah you're gonna get homesick i don't i i don't know per se no like it's no. more like just the vibe like because if if they came here i'd be stoked like yeah and i don't think i'd m miss too many things physically in the country like it's more the people yeah but the first time you were in canada you did feel homesick well, I mean, mind you, the first time I was in Canada, it was in the middle of COVID. I couldn't speak French, couldn't learn French, couldn't meet anybody. I had to stay inside because of isolation. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, since you're here, you haven't felt like that at all? I don't like, think oh, so. Like, I miss Australia for this and this and... Um, I think because I've got a different kind of mindset coming in. It's more like, mm. okay, so like here, like it's going to be a bit tricky. Like it's obviously going to be mm. not easy communicating to anyone about... Yeah anything because i don't know all the words in french yeah i think you're lying oh okay <laughs> all right psychoanalyze me sweet i think you're lying because you have been complaining so much about the quebec and culture since we're here and you're like why do they do things like that here in australia it's way better blah 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 i don't blah, think blah. i've done it recently as much no but the first i would say three to four months oh yeah well that's because i'm a, that's because there's an adjustment period. So there's the excitement of being somewhere new and everything's yeah. new and exciting. Yeah. And then there's the adjustment and trying to figure out what you know versus what you're learning. Yes. And then trying to make sure they don't clash too much. Yeah, yeah. which we call the culture shock. Well, yeah, it's a... It's going to happen, it, yeah. Yeah. And it's that I, like, mm. like one of the things... There are some things that I like more here and there's other things that I do not like about here. Mm. And... It's fun because then when I go, like, for example, go home, I have an appreciation for what I've seen elsewhere Yeah. more. Yeah. And yeah, I've, I really feel like it's more well-rounded and then it's not so, mm -hmm. I don't know, like, I, like, not everything's so bad at home because there's other things, even in Canada, that are worse. <laughs> like... True. True. But yeah, I do, I did feel a lot homesick but that's fine and you're gonna get through it like any changes i think there's a bit of a downside mm. but then just remind yourself the the reasons why you moved and yes of course it's gonna be difficult but then you're gonna go up yeah like again did and you then... feel like you had the support like at the time to sort of help you or is it because you didn't have as much because and i'm happy to go under the bus on this one no, 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 like I had, I definitely had the support from you. Definitely had the support from you, like obviously, and you were the only one because. I think, okay. Yeah, yeah, you were the only one because I wasn't working still. It was COVID. I was alone. Everyone was working uh, around me. I was living at your parents' place. Like every day I would be alone into the the big house mm. that was long and i had nothing i would try to work on some stuff and but with my visa i couldn't find work it was illegal so it's just like here and with me myself and i trying to keep myself busy and trying to be productive but that was really hard yeah 
And the moment we, t- we took the decision to move out, even if I didn't have a job, that's when everything changed as well, because I was in my own space. I, you know, I could be busy in my own space and not being afraid of annoying anyone. Yeah. So, yeah, but it's a good thing I had you because I really wanted to go back home. Yeah. I was like, what did I do? <laughs> Honestly, and it yeah. was really, really hard. But yeah, no, then, you know, it's, it's an action and mm. doing things and making the changes that I needed. Yeah. To make your situation better. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that idea of reaffirming to yourself why you made the film mm. in the first place. It's really important. Mm. Yeah. Because if you if you doubt those reasons, it's gonna make it very hard to sort of yeah. stay. Yeah. But yeah. I think that idea of adapting to the situation as well mm-hmm. is is something that initially you think is going to be fairly easy because you're like, Oh, I'm gonna I want this. I yeah. want this. It's gotta be yeah. easy. I like I will work hard yeah. and then they realize working hard is not physically working. It's like this psychological thing. Ah, it's that is mentally, way harder. Mentally working hard because you are confronted to yourself. Again, it's you yourself and I and you <laughs> and I. You yourself and, and whatever. And whatever. <laughs> you yourself and your name. Yeah, you are confronted to yourself, to your old patterns, and you're like, oh shoot. Actually actually need to do more than uh moving countries to change yeah exactly you know so you build you have to build a certain resilience yeah. when you move abroad but that's the greatest gift that moving abroad can bring you you reckon yeah B- building a sense of resilience because not everything is going to go as planned and you need to switch your mindset and reframe your brain to be able to see what's happening to you as a challenge and not as an obstacle. Oh, I mean, I, like I get where you're going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's it, it it's yeah. No, I, I mm. the idea of an, uh, an obstacle might, but an obstacle is a challenge. But I definitely understand the idea of like um, mm-hmm. these challenges are not. Uh, they're just new uh, goals. Yeah, the new the new goals to get past. Yeah, and then to reach to, your bigger goal. Mm. Yeah, which is to continue to enjoy life but explore new places. Yeah. And one of the things that I find interesting about moving abroad is that you end up wanting to... You can travel now from there. Yeah. Your little trips to like... Because we have seen more of Quebec than I was expecting to. Yeah. And that's simply because moving here, like we were, we had that opportunity of just driving around and seeing new places. Mm. And even in like Australia, when you came over, like a lot of the time, if someone goes traveling to a place, they hit all the hot spots, right? You go to all the hot spots, but you don't see a lot of the small stuff. Mm. And I think that's one of the beauties of moving abroad is that you actually get to a deeper dive into the culture and the people and even just seeing stuff that maybe other people just will never be able to yeah. see. And you get a real good appreciation for it, for the small things. Yeah. Appreciating it, appreciate appreciating the walks in a new neighborhood by yourself. We just went for a walk just Exactly. Before, and I feel so much better after it. Exactly. And it's just, yeah, taking the time. And I guess you, you develop new skills, but you develop new tricks for you to get better. And when, when you go back home, it's important to remind yourself of those moments of like, if you're not feeling well, well, you can go for a walk and look at the small things you've never noticed before, like you were doing when you were tra- traveling and living abroad. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know? Yeah. So having that appreciation for like, yeah, no, I see it. Yeah, yeah cool. It's I like... I really thought, thought of it like that, but definitely like, something I clicked Yes, yeah, and discovering your backyard again. Yeah, backyard there, adventuring. Yeah, there's always, there's always something new you're going to discover. And that's pretty... That's really pretty. Yeah. Yeah. It opens your mind, I think, to so much beautiful things. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. And the and the cool thing is as well, when it comes to popping over, is that once you're when, when you're discovering these new places, you have to try and communicate to other people in different ways. So not just even verbal, but mm. like seeing the different physical cues of like other people is very different culture to culture yeah i mean we mentioned it earlier with like the volleyball and stuff you don't speak the same language but but 
body language means so much yeah like i can like even though i don't know what's being said i can definitely hear tone and mm -hmm. like seeing someone like get down and like i don't know what that means he needs a perk up like <laughs> he needs a hug he needs a hug <laughs> no hey dude it's called harassing <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sir. Yeah. You might, yeah, you might get kicked out of the country, <laughs> so please don't. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I'll, lim I'll limit the idea of physical touching, but yeah, yeah, I think one of the things that I found, particularly going through Asia, not that I moved there, mm -hmm. but my ability to communicate visually, because I knew that they weren't going to be able to speak English. Yeah, but I feel we should keep that subject for the next. Oh, okay, okay, okay. For the next Sorry. one. Sorry. Um, <laughs> just feels so good to talk about. Oh. I miss Asia. Yeah. But I think, um, mm. like, to sort of, not, do you want to sort of wrap it up here or? But, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I... I was sort of thinking just, like, regarding language. Mm. And, but I don't want it to go into it too much because I think that was, oh, my goodness, I've totally snuffed things up, haven't I? Yeah, you did. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the next episode. Yeah, exactly. But, anyway, I think we're going to end it up on this little blunder that yeah like, just like, 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 <laughs> into. look we're still we're still learning you know yeah we're still, and that's the beauty of things you know yeah yeah no, no, no. <laughs> anyway on that blabber thank you so much <laughs> to have listened we really really appreciate you all the support you can give us we're gonna take it so you can follow us on our different socials like youtube facebook instagram and tiktok and thank you very much for listening. But Hayden, <laughs> before we say goodbye, what's the spicy question? Uh, the spicy question is, do you think people that go to a country that doesn't speak their language and they don't, and the people that go there don't learn any of the language, are they being disrespectful? Repeat that. Let me try. <laughs> <laughs> If you go to another country and you don't try and learn a little bit of their language, mm. is that a sign of disrespect to the people of that country? Mm. Or laziness or Or laziness or No, I'm gonna stick with, I'm gonna stick with this disrespect okay. for a little bit. Okay, so okay, cool, cool, cool. So are people not learning the basics of a language of the country they visit? Are they being disrespectful? Yeah. Things like your highs, your buys, your thank yous, your pleases. Yeah. Like if you don't know those, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I've got an opinion about that. Yeah, I've got an opinion about that too. Exactly. <laughs> and if you want to hear that, please like and subscribe this one because we're gonna mention it in the next episode. Stay updated. Thank you guys. Bye. Cheers, guys. Bye.